they need to learn to be able to do. And, and it's a, so that's a really terrific thing. And there are a number of other pieces to Travelport. They're very structured in the way they recruit. They have time frames. They have strict rules on their recruiting. They do a terrific job. They've been a really a great example for us. And lastly, I wanted to mention Georgia Aquarium. Um, in part because I really wanted something that focused on bio. <laughs> it has a little bit of bio in there, although Georgia Aquarium has uh, internships across that run the gamut, everything from business to, um, to the, the kind of usual suspects of biology and chemistry. But Georgia Aquarium is also the flip side. They're highly competitive, but they're unpaid. So there, that, there's still room out there for that, but, uh, and, and you can have an exceptional program. The students are, this is a very structured program as well. They have it outlined very clearly on their website. Students know what they're doing. They're, they're connected to both a volunteer coordinator as well as a coordinator within their department, depending on the focus. And they're, um, they are also engaged in real-time work. I know that our biology department at, department at GSU, we have students that go through that program uh, every semester, and they're engaged in, they're actually literally engaged in work that's going on there at the aquarium, which is global, so that's really fabulous. Any comments or questions? So this is one of the last slides that has substantive information, so we're, we're ending the near, near the end of the talking head portion, I promise. Uh, but I do want to focus some time on the best practices and hopefully get our conversation started this afternoon for best practices. I think this changes every single day. I think it takes a lot of creativity to keep internships and co-ops fresh and new, and, and, it, and it depends on a conversation between a lot of different people from the universities to, to um, industry folks. So again, I'm really glad to be here to be able to present this. We've, I've already mentioned quite a bit about the real work activities. Um, I also wanted to give you, again, to get off of me talking, show you a very short example. This is half the length of time of the previous video. So um, Tycho has an interesting take on uh, best practices. So one of the things that we um, did at Tyco to really ensure great intern experience and also their productivity is to make it mandatory that everybody has to do a performance evaluation process. So within the two weeks they're in the company, they need to set at least five major objectives along with their manager. And five weeks into an internship, they do a midsummer review. And what we found is that any interns who actually set up these objectives early on with their managers, they tend to uh, exceed, if not uh, at least meet the expectation. And then what happened is for the rest of the internship, the manager would help them set the bar higher and give them new objectives. And that's one thing that um, really to be a tremendous value for our interns, they find that they have more stories to tell when they go back on campus. They share uh, the wonderful experiences they had and they really feel a sense of accomplishment. A couple of other very big, uh, they, the, the responses at, at, from NACE for more responded than, than didn't in terms of being a best practice was offering flex time, which I think is probably not news to us either, that students are really interested in having flex time or, or different work schedules for a variety of reasons. In part, it's a generational thing, I get that, but it's also they have a lot on their plate. And if they can, and I know the GSU students in particular are working their way through school 99% of the time. So to juggle all these different things, if, if an intern, if, if it's possible, if an internship site can offer flexibility, that, that goes a long way to making it possible. I'm not going to read through all of these because you guys can see these, but I just want to highlight a few of them. I really, I've already mentioned um, inviting faculty or staff to the site, but I think that that is huge and it helps to develop relationships across the board. I also think holding new hire panels is a really creative, cool idea. I think that's something also that Travelport does, and that is in having literally new hires come in who are a year or two out who look like the students, right? They're, they're in many cases, if they're traditional students. So they, they will be more likely, that, that helps to sell your company. It helps to sell the, the opportunity. And it really can get some good ideas going. And again, build that communication, build those lines of communication because you start to help them network and they stay connected to you. 
Um, bringing in speakers from your company's executive ranks, I think, is a huge one, too, so that they, again, don't feel invisible. I do hear that from students sometimes, and I think that that's important that they don't, that, that whole stereotype of an intern is just coming in and just sort of schlepping around, making copies, and filling kind of minor roles. They are minor roles on some level, yes, but they do need to be recognized and respected as part of the organization, and I believe if you extend that to them, you will get it back tenfold. And, and introducing them to the higher ranks in your organization just opens up, also it opens up all kinds of ideas for them in terms of career paths, which is really, really helpful for them. And then also, I also wanted to point out, um, well, Joy had already talked about this a little bit, but holding orientations for everyone, I think, is another thing that I have heard from companies and that I have heard has been quite successful. And I just really, really recommend. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. Just saying, you know, here, here's where you, you know, pointing out things in the organization so they understand where things are. A lot of students, especially if you're getting younger students into your organization, don't really, they've never been in the workplace in some cases. So they really don't know how to be out there. They want to, they really want to, but they don't always know what to do. So an orientation can be really, really helpful for them. Any other thoughts on best practices from anyone? Okay, we're at the end of my presentation. I do want to hand you a couple of different resources. I have to stay close to the mic, so I'm just going to hand them when I'm done. But um, I did, again, I will email this to everyone so that you'll have, have an idea. You know, you can re reference some of the resources. One of them that I want to recommend to you, the top one that I mentioned there, I do have here. Um, I have to admit, when I was doing researching this, I discovered that they have an update. So this is the old one, and I've now ordered the update. But they have a 2008. This is the 2008 edition of the NACE, NACE Guide, Building a Premier Internship Program. Lots of good information in there. Um, lots of really great resources. And they have a 2012 version that you can order that I, it, I think is a little smaller. I'm not, I don't think I'm getting a binder. Intern Bridge is a great resource. Internships.com is a great resource. This is the um, article I mentioned on best practices for converting. And then this last one, um, I didn't make as many copies of this, so just you know, let me know if you need them. I can definitely forward it. A colleague, a, a, well, a colleague out, many, some of you may have already um, connected to this person, um, Michael True, who works up at Messiah College, has done a tremendous amount of work in presenting information to um, employers and colleges in terms of uh, building quality internship programs. So this is again a guide to, to it is an example of, of how to build, of what Joy was talking about, building a strong internship program from the employer side. And um, that is about it. I recommend Cooperative Education Internship Association, CEIA. And I'm not endorsing any of these, by the way. I'm just letting you know they're there. And um, I believe that is about it. I wish you the best of luck. I'm, I know I only covered just a very small um, scratch the surface on this, but hopefully I helped you to get started. Oh, there's one other thing. I do have an example, and I want to just caveat before I send I hand this out. Um, it was an afterthought today. I thought, you know what would be really good is to show you an example of a strong internship description. This is not in um, related to biology. It's related to communications, but it really it's a real life. This company, um, Genetic Inc., is here in Atlanta, and they agreed to let me use this as an example. They just wrote an exceptional description. I